Well, and welcome you to another pod for Israel, and I have with me the wife Yay. of the potty. <laughs> So wife my beautiful wife body. is here with us and we're going to be diving into some stuff about the, you know, should Christians even celebrate these or Jewish holidays? Why are, why are Christians whoa. doing this? Whoa, whoa. Jewish what? holidays? Wait yeah. a minute. They're in the Bible. Yeah. Is the Bible just for the Jews? No, not at all. So I want to just start it out by saying these are biblical holy days. Yeah. Biblically appointed festivals. Yeah, and as we were talking with Dr. Soraf, you know, all these points not only point to the past events of God's salvation and the redemption of the forefathers of our faith, but they also point to things to come. And we've been kind of going through that already, uh, and we're going to be diving into Yom Kippur soon. And, and uh, yeah, it's, it's amazing to kind of see the thread to the past, present, and future to come. So... It's, it's really all about celebrating Him. It's about celebrating our Messiah, about celebrating what God has done for our forefathers, but also mm-hmm. what God has done for us. Mm-hmm. I mean, and that's incredibly important every day of the year, right? But I think that God wants to highlight these times for us to be able to remember. And He kind of has us on the cycle of remembrance every year, because how quickly do we forget? Mm-hmm super fast. We really want to discuss what it's like as a family for our family. If, if you decide to kind of build this into your family traditions and stuff, what to watch out for, what to kind of look for. And, but before we kind of get into this, I, I, I know all the time I'm seeing people in the comments and, oh, oh boy, some, some of you guys are super trolls. Um, but we <laughs> don't, love you. Don't, we love you. Yeah. You know, Jesus, Jesus died for trolls too. Right. But, but basically guys, don't attack one another. This isn't about legality. Let's let's talk about what these festivals are not about. This isn't about the work of the law or attaining righteousness. Mm-mm. Does does he love me more because I do all these things? No. Nope. Clearly, that's anti-gospel to say that. You know, our Messiah fulfilled and will fulfill all of these festival, festivals. Mm-hmm. Again, we, we kind of have covered this already. There's some that are yet to be fulfilled you know as we read our bible we see there's a lot in revelation yet to come the kingdom coming that's what we pray for Mm -hmm. and so there's some that's been fulfilled like in passover and the spring festivals so as we look at it it's about him it's not what we can bring so that cuts off any boasting we can have we can't boast against someone else in the same ways we're not supposed to condemn others if they don't Mm-hmm. Let's let's just read what Paul wrote to the Colossi church, right? Colossians yeah. two sixteen. This one I think really represents our perspective. So let no one judge you in food or in drink, or regarding a festival or a new moon or a Sabbath, which are shadows of things to come. But the substance is of Christ, our Messiah. Yeah, Nothing that we're beautiful. doing should be of our own works for for ulterior motives. Mm-hmm. It's just for us to learn. A little bit yeah. more, a different perspective of who Yeshua is, who our God is, who our Redeemer is. And you have to look at, you know, in the context of what Paul was dealing with with these guys, these Judaizers, these people that were coming in, telling these Gentiles to observe all these commandments, and if you don't, you're pretty much going to hell. It, how wicked is that? You know, also, many of the people that they were throwing this stuff on, these people, m- most of the Roman Empire were slaves. So it's like you're telling a slave that you have to observe the Shabbat, you have to do all these festivals, you have to eat perfect kosher, you have to do all these things like that. You know, it's it's cruel because they didn't have the freedom to do it. They they didn't even have the option. But, and yet, you could still learn about it. What was being taught in the synagogues was the whole Torah. I mean, they were learning all of these things in the synagogues, but Mm -hmm. it wasn't... This rod to beat others with, or a burden that that if you don't carry it, you're you know you're dead. Or right? a prerequisite. Yeah, it's not it a was, prerequisite. So 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 we really see in the context what's really going on here. So on one side, let's not beat it, each other up, but on the other side, it's uh, don't throw it out because it's foreshadowing Christ. It's foreshadowing our Messiah. So we also look at Isaiah one in the first. Right off the bat, Isaiah's first rebuke is actually coming to people dealing with these festivals. He says, when you when you come to appear before me, who has required this from your hand to trample my courts? Bring no more futile sacrifices. Incense is an abomination to me. 
the new moons, the Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies. I cannot endure iniquity in the sacred meeting. Your new moons and your appointed feast, my soul hates. They're a trouble to me. I'm weary of bearing them. Now, if you stop right there, you might say, whoa. So, <laughs> Those were his feasts. He's the one that commanded me to do it. What is he saying? Yeah, this is pretty harsh. You're almost like, see, I told you you're not supposed to do that stuff. I don't, no, no, this is, uh, let's keep reading. Because the solution. Read it in context. Like the Paul whole said, context of the whole the word. The substance is Messiah. So listen to this and tell, tell me what you think. Wash yourselves and make yourselves clean. Put away the, the evil of your doings before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Rebuke the oppressor. Defend the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be wool. So, this can only point to Yeshua. This can only point to our Messiah. The one who fulfills all of these scriptures with that promise made through Isaiah. How powerful <laughs> is as he's rebuking them for their wrong mindset, doing works without heart, doing works without seeing the need for the Savior and being humbled by that. They were, they were coming, they were doing all these rituals. They were checking things off the box. They were making yeah. a list, checking it twice. And <laughs> Who's not here nice. <laughs> right. You know, but like, hey, I did it. I'm good. I can go do whatever I want and live yeah. my life the way I want to. But God's like, no. Yeah. No, I care about your heart. And out of the wellspring of your heart, well, mm. mouth speaks, but your right. life is lived. So they were bringing sacrifice. They were doing rituals, but forgetting the point of it all. If we forget him, if we forget the reason for the season, we forget the entire point of the Torah and these prophetic days. So Romans summarizes it so beautifully in Paul as he just kind of has this outburst. And he says, for of him and through him and to him are all things to him be the glory forever. Amen. And that's in Romans 11, 30. 33 through 36, we see his heart cry pour out here. So, and he's like summarizing the, the whole Jewish history and wrestling with, with that whole story. And really, that's what these holidays are about. On one side, we're celebrating the biblical history. This is not, just, again, this is not just Jewish history. This is our history. This is the history of the forefathers of faith. And this is our history and our future that we're celebrating. So does God require us to observe these days? No, it's not for salvation. And we're not to judge others who choose not to, but God is inviting us in mm -hmm. to know him. And so each time we read about people studying the scriptures and the epistles or the books of Acts, I mean, what were they studying in the synagogues? It the was law, the, the, the Torah, law and the, the prophets. Torah, the... Yeah, like that's what they were reading. I mean, we didn't have the scriptures canonized in, until much later. Mm -hmm. And most of them weren't written until like 40 years after his death, burial, and resurrection. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's good context to kind of see that. And when Yeshua was speaking of, when he said, you search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life, and these are they that testify of me. So Yeshua is again clarifying, hey, it's all about me. So for me, for us as a family, we're like, shoot, yeah, we have the freedom to do as you know whatever we want. But man, I want to. I first of all, I need to stop and remember. But also, I want my kids to know about this. And it's kind of like a like a scavenger hunt or a treasure hunt, you know, where yeah. God laid out these holidays, which right. I mean, in and of itself, it's it's not like <laughs> there's horrible burden like oh, it's it's a feast whoever right. said oh what i have to they celebrate thanksgiving oh, i have to eat so much like I know, oh right? i mean gluttony is not a good you thing you forced that apple pie on <laughs> me babe and you know what <laughs> that become pie man yeah, oh. but <laughs> to get to Why? explore these holy days yeah and see how they were a picture of Yeshua and his redemptive plan. And I mean, before they even had flannel graphs, they had the holidays. Yeah, and this was exactly. a visual reminder or a visual picture of the hope pre-Christ that the world had. 
Yeah, so I mean, we, we read in Deuteronomy 6, 7, God's strong compass point for us. You shall teach them, speaking of his commandments, diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down and when you rise up. So you see the father's heart, our father in heaven, his heart is that we would take every opportunity to teach our children, but also that dude, when I teach my kids, it's like, it's the sermon I need to hear half the time. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like I'm reading something and it's not just for my kids. It's for me. I think that's really a point, an important point though, because yeah. we can't expect the Holy spirit to work in our kids' lives in an area if he yeah. hasn't first worked in our lives. That's right. That's right. So the father's heart is really on a lot of this. Why these appointed dates? Why not just any day? Well, <laughs> you know, if it's just left for our own <laughs> devices, we won't ever stop. I tell you what, every holiday, every Shabbat, I'm always kind of just like, oh, let me get it. Let, let me get this. Just one more thing. Just one more the thing. The sun isn't setting yet. And, and oh my goodness, it snuck up on us this you know, year. Every year. <laughs> us to stop is a difficult task. I mean, this is hard for the shepherd to do. I'd say probably the most difficult task for God to get me to do is to stop what I'm doing or refocus. So to enter this festival, we also need to enter with the eyes of a child. And that's not just, oh, so I can teach my children. No, no, for me to receive it. You know, like uh, Yeshua said, unless we're converted and become like little children, we won't even enter the kingdom of heaven. So, like, you're never, don't ever take this so seriously in solemn. But, but, like, it's with reverence. It is with reverence. Obviously, there's days that are really somber, but also it's great celebration. And we have to be able to approach this with, with eyes of a child. Remembering that our father set this up for us to see his salvation, to celebrate, to enjoy him through this. You know, don't take it from us. Let's hear from our kids what they have to say about these appointed days. I mean, what's what's your take? And what festivals do we celebrate in the fall? We celebrate Hanukkah. Uh, That's in the winter. Yom Kippur. Yom Torah. Yom Torah. Yom Torah. Ba 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 ba. Ah, Sukkot. What's your favorite thing about Sukkot? I get to camp out with Daddy. Yeah. And this year is when we gonna camp. Having yeah. all Daddy <laughs> uh, at home all the time. I also and like you can go play with us. I like looking at the stars. Who dwelt in these tents? The Israelites! Where? They when? In Jerusalem when they got destroyed and he built it back and <laughs> then they put some cup. That's right. That's right. You're talking about the Ezra final Nehemiah. Sukkot, uh, end date No, he's talking about Ezra and Nehemiah. Oh, that too. Yeah. Hey, I don't. Mr. Bible scholar. And why do we blow the trumpets? Because. Because it's too cold. Ah, because God is returning on the sound of the trumpet. And what's going right. to happen? We'll split open and living water will go through all the way to the Dead Sea sea and and the Mediterranean. Wow, Um, high five, buddy. Good job. So before we get into the nitty gritty of how do you even do this, one, there is no formula. I think in this culture, especially as moms, we have this Pinterest pressure or Instagram pressure of Mm -hmm. performance and what are others going to say and I want to show it off, you know, and the fall and winter is already loaded with the pressure of Thanksgiving and then on its heels Christmas and is the wrapping paper perfect? But I mean... Really, what kid ever cares about how the wrapping paper looks? It's it's your Instagram it's account, right? They're just tearing <laughs> through it, and they want to see what did you get me? Like, 
And sometimes we put so much effort on the wrapping that we miss the point of the whole thing. And so as we're going into these holy days, yeah. it's not about performance. It's not about yeah. oh, somebody's going to criticize it or, oh, I want to make that perfect picture to post that I did this. Again, it's not about works. It's not about checking off the list. It's not Let's about you. review <laughs> Isaiah, right? <laughs> Yeah. Um, and so as we're giving these suggestions of what we've found works with our family, you're going to find your own way of, that it works for your kids and, and your routine and traditions. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's like, I think, I mean, personally, if you read through the actual commandments, so like you read through in, in, in the Torah, what it says about these holidays, it, it talks you know, blow the shofar. It doesn't actually give you all the form. I know there's, you know, in rabbinic Judaism, there's a lot of different traditions. And so there's some stuff and you know what, feel free to, you can dive into some of this stuff and explore some of it and, you know, use what you feel like or not. I mean, the commandment is quite ambiguous. It just says it to blow the trumpets. Ended. So it's open-ended. And I mm -hmm. think it's on purpose because otherwise we start getting caught inside Too stressed out the nitty gritty about the, you know. But that's really wise. Don't don't fall into the Pinterest pressure, you know, into getting all that right. It's the, really the enemy's tactic yeah, to steal yeah. the joy from us, it and, and so us I can't out. stress that enough. Yeah. I mean, look, Yom Teruah was just two days ago, yeah, and three days ago i was like oh my goodness how did this already happen i gotta make my apple pie and i gotta make my apple butter and i gotta make my apple challah and by the end i'm like okay yes i want to enjoy and i yeah. want to provide abundance because god has ab uh, provided abundantly for me and mm -hmm. i want this to be an occasion where my children and whoever we bring into our home sees that abundance and that blessing and gets right. to taste and see that the Lord is good. That's part of the experience. But at the same time, you know what? If I didn't spend five hours on my challah and I did my 30-minute dinner rolls and braided hey, it up, those hey, are good, by the way. Those are awesome. it works. With that apple butter, dang. <clears throat> Come on now. No, but really. So, I mean, let's just address Yom Teruah. What does it mean? Teruah yeah. is a shout of joy or a trumpet of joy. It is the day of trumpets. Yeah. And this is to remember what God has done on Mount Sinai yeah, he, when he, came he called the people Oof. to himself, right? It's beautiful. It's, it's a picture of him calling us to himself. Yeah. As the trumpet is sounding, brrr, getting louder, louder, it's shaking the earth, right? Mm -hmm. And it's just fire and lightning. I mean, what a picture. So just conveying that picture to our children that this yeah. is what he's done. And then there's the hope of what he's yet to do, mm -hmm. right? Right. Um, and we see that picture on the Mount of Olives. And Yeshua teaches in Matthew on as he's sitting on the Mount of Olives. And he says, I'm going to come back and rest my feet down on the great trumpet. And it references the prophets as well as when the trumpet sounds and when the Messiah comes back, his feet shall rest on the Mount of Olives. And what happens? Splits it in two. shakes and it splits yeah. in two. I mean, this is so amazing. Cool. This is the hope that we have that he's going to return to us. Honestly, this is the stuff that joy and empower. If especially boys and girls, like you tell this story, this is the Bible story they love hearing before they go to bed. It's like wow, you know. <laughs> but yeah, you tell the story, you tell the parables. It's very much about telling the story. If you got a if you got a ram's horn, blow it. You might sound like a dead yak, but that's okay. It's <laughs> hilarious. Your kids love it, you know. <laughs> or you take a plastic one off yeah. of you know Amazon, or or you take paper and you roll it up and you have everybody march around. And do, 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 do. It, you know, honestly, and and the, the actual translation it. of the word, it's it, it's to, a loud noise, so it's a day of the loud noises. Mm -hmm. so, you see, it translated as a shout of joy, having an opportunity to make a bunch of loud noises. <laughs> <laughs> you might not appreciate that aspect yeah, so much not. as the parents, but you know what? Embrace it. Yeah, yeah. Embrace it. Let them feel it. 
God right. is about experiencing it. I mean, and our, it's only one day of the year. Our kids love it. I mean, they love trying to blow the ram's horn. They love trying blowing their toy trumpets and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You know, living here in Israel, you got a lot of like cheap little holiday uh, trinkets that you can get around it. But but even if you don't have that, again, it's not about the legality. It's not about I Piece have of paper. to blow it with the the shofar with the you know different uh tones and stuff like that and the different rhythms and oh that's fun to learn and practice if you can do it great but again really blowing the trumpet reminds us of yeshua's return but it also is a time of worship Mm -hmm. you know what what happens in heaven before his return it's a it's a huge like this is there's this refrain of praise and worship to god as he is coming Mm -hmm. down to take his reign Mm -hmm. as he's coming to redeem the earth. Wow. There's this massive heavenly worship session that's going on. And we get to partake of that and join in with the heavens. So that's what we did. Like we had friends over. We had a big dinner dinner together. It was a fun time. We blew the the shofar. shofar. And then we we worshiped together at the end of the night. It was awesome. And Mm. I mean, every night's great to be able to to worship together, but I mean, this is a sanctified time. It's kind of special, and to to remember, and to it, with thankfulness of what's yet to come. Mm-hmm. You know, how many great songs could we sing about the return of Yeshua? So many. Mm-hmm. So that's Yom Teruah. Let's let's jump on to Yom Kippur. So one's happy, the other one seems kind of sad. Killjoy. Yeah, so <laughs> we know that there's this time in between Yom Torah and Yom Kippur of uh, like of repentance. Ten days, and so it, you know that's kind of good to teach about. And you it's could, a pause. Yeah, it's a it's a waiting time. Um, you, yeah, traditionally, the, you can do tshuva, which is like you you cast the bread into the sea or into any like stream or. We've done it down the drain because you never see it. And it references God taking our sins and casting it as far as the east is from the west. Right. It's the epitome of forgiveness that we even tell our kids, you know, as they're saying, so-and-so did this, so-and-so did that. Who are you siding on? Are you with the accuser? Are you bringing their sins up before them? Yeah. Like, or do you want to give grace? And so this is just a visual picture go. of God's grace for us and his forgiveness that we get to enjoy through his son, Yeshua. Right. And so then you come to Yom Kippur. Now, for us here in Israel, everything shuts down. I mean, mm-hmm. it's national ride your bike in the middle of the highway day. Yes. Which is, uh, we do not recommend that for all of you around do the world, everywhere else. Do not try this at home. <laughs> uh, don't, don't try it anywhere but in Israel. Um, literally, there's like no cars on the road. It's amazing. Um, but, you know, there's people who fast. Some people worship. Some people, you know, it's like it's a day of intercession. Um, I think God's called each of us to, you know, maybe different things. I know that when you're nursing, obviously you're not going to fast. And I mean, even the rabbis say not to do that. And kids don't necessarily mm-hmm. fast. No, they don't. But the parents would. And But again, is it about, is it just about us doing this uh, Being miserable all mitzvah? day long? No, it's not about being miserable and, and depriving ourselves of the luxury of food. And I'm right, suffering. Right. So God, will you see my plight and will you forgive me? <sighs> Obviously, for us, this day carries not not a somber hoping that God will save us. For us, we have this assurance of salvation mm-hmm. it's hope. in our Messiah and it's, Yeshua. And it's thankfulness. But let's just rewind really quick. Okay, Yom Kippur, right. Day of Atonement. What did that look like in the Bible, right? So everybody stayed at home. You were yeah. supposed to deprive yourself. <laughs> um, it's not very specific in the scriptures of what X, Y, and Z you had to do, but um, Mm -hmm. you can interpret that. And they were supposed to wait for, this was the one day that the high priest went into the Holy of Holies Mm -hmm. and and offered atonement for the nation, Right. right? Right. So we have this picture of the high priest entering into the Holy of Holies on behalf of the people. That's intercession. Yeah. This is a picture of intercession. And the people didn't know, is the priest going to be able to come out or, you know, the, the rope is tied around and the bell is jingling. Did the mm. bell stop jingling? Are they going to have to pull him out because nobody else can go in after him? Like, you know, there's a seriousness, a, yeah. a, a, a weight to this. But now as believers, okay, who is our high priest? 
we read in the book of Hebrews that Yeshua right. is our high priest, but we don't have a high priest who cannot understand us, right? The book of Hebrews is an excellent reading with your family, either in excerpts or in whole, to, to start the night before and to finish uh, at the next dinner when you break the fast, to read through it from chapter one to the end, or, or in parts, um, but just to get a picture and an understanding of how Yeshua is our high priest and the gift he is. But then, as believers, what are we? We're priests, too, right. and we are called to intercede for the lost, to bring the mm. ministry of reconciliation yeah. of the lost to the Father. And so, really, I mean, Yom Kippur is a, a commissioning of our us. We're supposed to be interceding and reconciling the world, a broken world, to the Father year-round. But it's a particular day where in community mm. we can intercede for Israel, for the Jewish people worldwide, for our friends and family who don't know Yeshua. Yeah. Um, we're supposed to be broken before him. Again, us depriving our bodies yeah. is not a formula. It's not like, I did this, so uh, God, you do that. Check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not about that. But it's a it's a place of us appearing broken before him. And when our bodies are broken, a lot of times our hearts are broken too. Mm. And so that goes together because we're intertwined beings. Yeah. Body, soul, and spirit. Um, and so it helps us to see that picture so whether you fast or whether you don't fast it's a day to remember god's salvation mm -hmm. his atonement it's uh as we're going to talk about soon it's also kind of like judgment day we see this as like the final judgment is passed mm -hmm. the sentencing day is yom kippur where it's final mm -hmm. and so that should that should provoke us as intercessors i mean we pray for israel we pray for our neighbors we pray for our family the people for us, it's it's a it's kind of a day of celebration because we think of of the assurance, the blessed assurance that we have mm -hmm. as followers of Yeshua. That it's not resting on us anymore; it's resting in our Savior. But at the same time, mixed with that joy and that confidence, which is so beautiful, it should also provoke us to prayer. Mm -hmm. You know that. Um, like you said, to intercede for those around us who haven't heard or ha who haven't known him, uh, who don't have that walk with him. Who've for, rejected him. For, for the world that's outside of faith, this day is the worst day ever. Mm -hmm. For us who've embraced Yeshua as our Messiah, it's the best day ever. So it's an interesting day, but a very serious day, I would say, um, of introspection, of prayer, and intercession. Mm -hmm. I think that 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 uh, I guess that the tension tension of yeah. our joy and yet the the weight of the the, the judgment us, that's yeah. happening around us was really illustrated last year as we saw mm. all the children out. They're drinking their little sippy cups and they're yeah. having their snacks. They're on their bikes. That you can hear them laughing and playing. I mean, shoot, this is their like. <laughs> Dream come true. They can be the kids, the big own the kids street on the block on Yom Kippur. It's amazing. <laughs> it really is like the best day ever for kids. But you you feel that joy that they get to rest in in freedom. Mm. Yeah. And that's the joy that we get as believers. Yeah. And yet there is that weight and silence of nobody mm. working, nobody doing anything. There's no cars. The parents are all sitting in chairs or on the curb, <laughs> miserably afflicting Don't die, themselves. Don't die, son. Just go out there. But <laughs> I mean, they're having fellowship, yeah, yeah, yeah. but there's not yeah. a lot of, you know, right. joking around. And there's as little energy being expended as possible. And usually it's not so cool yet. It's like, it's usually pretty hot. Still pretty hot. Miserable. It's true. Yeah. And there's that beautiful tension illustrated mm. in life around us of the spiritual tension that we feel as well. Yeah. Um, and then the three sorrow. Days later. <laughs> the sorrow is gone, and we celebrate at the end. The funny thing too with Yom Kippur is, is once the sun goes down, it's a party. And it's the cars like, are out. <laughs> it, it's kind of a little, it's it's a little jarring because you come from this somber day of nothing and then all of a sudden, you know. It, it's a break it's, fast and, it's and a they feast. know how to break the fast. But the next festival, the next appointed day is Sukkot. Now this, 
There's so much to say about Sukkot. One of my favorite holidays ever at this point. And it's like God has called us out to camp with him. Like a good, good father. I mean, how can it's you describe it other? <laughs> you know, it's like every good dad, not to throw condemnation if you haven't taken your kid camping, but it's like... It's a Norman it's Rockwell a, picture of, yeah. <laughs> you know, going out fishing with dad, going out camping with dad, building the fire. It's the I mean, Boy shoot, Scouts. My kids just, like, they were so excited that dad had to go to work to pick up something and then go and pick up a heating element for the oven but they for just them, wanted to be with you they just wanted to be with me they just wanted to hang out and so all four kids in tow it was a uh, interestingly An adventure. adventure for them but it's like any good father he takes them out and spends time with them and god is pulling us out for this holiday of sukkot so what is sukkot actually involved okay you're supposed to dwell in these temporary Shelters. Sukkahs, these tabernacles, these shelters. A tabernacle is a little obscure. It's a it's a shelter, a t like a tent. So again, we're like to dive into some of the traditions of the day on how these things are constructed. Uh, you can go into the Torah and read what the Torah says and, and, and hear all that. But basically, kind of added into some of the details today, we kind of think as well as it's not necessarily the legalism of it, but to, to us, it's also kind of... It's neat. It's symbolic. Kind of goes a little deeper. A, a kosher sukkah today, number one, it cannot be a permanent structure. So like if you have this like permanent structure out on your patio or something like that, it, that's not a sukkah. You know, you can't take one of you your... You can temporarily enclose your patio. You could do that. You could do it if you want. We, we did that one year. Um, but, but basically... But it's not a permanent aspect of that structure. Exactly. Um, it, the, the emphasis on the temporary. Because, look, we are here temporarily in this world. Right. This world is not our home. And the Lord tabernacles inside our hearts, right? Yeah. And plus, it's supposed to be a kickback to when... Children they of had brought God had brought desert. the children of Israel out of Egypt and mm -hmm. dwelt among them as a pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day. Yeah. What? And they were in temporary dwellings because the wilderness was not their home. It was always with the hope of entering into the promised land. So pretty much all these sukkahs are kind of shanties. It's like <laughs> it's definitely it's a shanty, shanty town. <laughs> you go into the Orthodox neighborhood and it looks like all of a sudden everyone got poor and it's like shanty well, town. There's some pretty boss. Actually, there is temporary dwellings that like. Yeah. You could live Under in. the best, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. sure. I mean, some people sleep in them. Yeah. For a week. Yeah, yeah, we again. The Orthodox to neighborhood. We eat our meals there, although we do camp. Well, you send dad out with the kids to sleep hey, for a night. I've been postpartum. Uh, I'm inviting you. Now that you're done with the baby, you can you can come join <laughs> us in the sukkah. It'll this be a year. new adventure. <laughs> but so, yeah, some, some people, but, but basically it has to be temporary. But the second thing is to have a kosher sukkah, it can only have one door one door and only one the yet its sides, sides are, are two, two. Mm -hmm. i'm on the inside which <laughs> side are you <laughs> no oh, but gosh. only one door right yeah. and this is also a reference to sheepfold it only had one mm -hmm. door and the shepherd stood in that entrance and what did yeshua say i am the door mm -hmm. and there's no and other name but my name <laughs> by which you may my enter eternal life it's like he's the only way mm -hmm. he is the way and so, like, for us, it's like, oh, that's really interesting, too. You have one door, and that's if you have two doors, it's not a kosher sukkah. You can have as many windows as you want. Just mm -hmm. not, but a not thief door. crawls in through the window. Oof. Yeah, you don't want to be that guy. <laughs> no, it's just a really cool It is picture, a cool illustration. Right? Yeah, really cool. Another thing to make it a kosher sukkah is it has to have open heavens. You open have roof. to have a yeah. roof that you can see a star or you can see the moon through. Mm -hmm. It can't be totally shielded up. Mm -hmm. which Typically, is little... they put branches on, and that's actually in yeah. Scripture, that they would put leafy branches or mm -hmm. the branches of the palm so that right. the light would be filtered in so that they could see the temporariness of their dwelling. Right. And so it's kind of, to, to me, that's like really beautiful symbolism of like us communing with God. And also... You know, Israel's very unique in that here you have very seasonal rain. And it's a little bit risky business because at Sukkot... The prayer is that it would rain. Yeah, you actually hope that God would rain out your so party. It's the early rain. 
<laughs> it's the promise of the right. early rains. Right. But but basically, uh, it's not supposed to rain during that time. Now, if you're in other places of the world, you might have more common rain coming in, you know, during, during that season. Which doesn't make sleeping little, outdoors very comfortable. A little risky. But these temporary dwellings are not just to be these, like, plain Jane shanties that with, you know, recycled materials. They are supposed to be festive. Yeah. Um, and on the so, outside, it looks like a shanty, but on the inside, you're supposed to decorate it with lights and garland and everything. And I know, like, we joked around with other friends, it's like inside a Christmas tree that you get to live inside of. Because, I mean, the same way you would decorate your, you know, tree or something for Christmas, it's like you're decorating the sukkah with lights and garland and, and all sorts of stuff, mm-hmm. ornaments and fruits but, and things. But it's also, you know, it's a seasonal holiday. And it's supposed to be a rejoicing of the fall feast mm-hmm. um, and the fall harvest. Just like, you know, Thanksgiving, you put your pumpkins out and your right. corn cobs and your hay bales. Yeah, you decorate. But with Sukkot, you typically, it's about God's promises and his mm. abundance and his provision and about how he brought us into the promised land. We're yeah. no longer dwelling in the wilderness. We've entered into his rest. Yeah. Right. And especially as believers, wow, yes, like mm-hmm. so many times, yes, in Yeshua's rest. Um, and so typically you'll see in the sukkah the seven species that God promised right. would be found in that promised land. And there's lots of teachings on that as well. But mm-hmm. you see these fruits the wheat, the barley, the uh, figs, the grapes, the olives, the pomegranates. I'm sure I forgot right. one. Um, but, but yeah, also, you know, people are decorating with biblical stories. I've Mm -hmm. seen in some of the sukkahs, they'll have like the different stories of the patriarchs and and pictures and and images. Mm -hmm. And you get your kids to to, to draw that and to color that. With our kids is I'll sit with them and I'll say, okay, what are some stories of redemption that we've learned about in the scriptures? And, and a lot of times they come up with the stories that they want to illustrate. I might see it a couple of them, uh-huh. but you tell about the story of redemption with the Garden of Eden and how God created right. it beautifully. You tell about Abraham sacrificing Isaac and how that was a picture of what Yeshua would be as a replacement sacrifice for us. Mm. You talk about the Exodus story and bringing God bringing his people out of bondage. Um, there's countless other stories that you can illustrate. And then you sit down with them and you say, okay, what does that look like? What are the main image images that um, bring to mind that redemptive story? And then you hang them up all around on the garlands. And then as you're eating out there and you're fellowshipping over the table and you're bringing your guests in, it becomes a conversation starter and you're able yeah. to talk and reteach and repeat. Because again, the theme of God is to remember, remember, remember who I am. Right. Don't forget who I am. Remember. So in, in a simple point, you know, think of some of these big biblical stories that you can get coloring pages from. You can find, I mean, this is easy to find online. You know, you can look up some of these different like biblical coloring pages and stuff and then have them color them in, mm-hmm. have them fill them in and, and then, and, and then have them decorate with their own artwork all over the sukkah. It's really nice. Mm-hmm. Again, if you don't have a, a suka, quote unquote, like the perfect, you know, you know, setup from like a supplier. You don't need that. You really don't. You could do it with bed sheets. You could do it with just whatever branches are in your backyard. It, it I does, also know families who the, do like their beds. Like they yeah. put the pictures and the lights around their beds, the kids' beds. Yeah. Um, if they don't have a uh, they don't have a patio, yeah, a patio. or a balcony. Right. Um, then they do it indoors, and it's and it's the symbolism again, guys. It's not about being Pinterest perfect. It's yeah, not about exactly. a formula. It's not about checking it off the box. It's Some people the will set up, of it. They'll set up their tent in the backyard. Mm-hmm. They'll do something like that. I mean, uh, either way, it, it's great. It's super fun. It gets you out of your ordinary. It's God calling you out of your ordinary, out of your normal routine. And so, like, part of the whole thing is to eat, to eat inside the sukkah. And so it's like you're. You're out picnicking every day, mm-hmm. and it's it's really a blast. W- one other thing that I really love that we do as a family tradition is remembering the prophecy that's yet to come of all the nations. Mm-hmm. Zechariah 14. When, when Yeshua returns, it says all the nations will come and bring an offering to the Lord every Sukkot, every Feast of Tabernacles. And so isn't that beautiful to see that in the future? So for us, 
We'll get Ethiopian food. We'll get Chinese food one night. We'll do, you know, we'll do food from all around the world. Celebrate the cultures with the promise and the and the hope that one day, all of the the countries, all the people will be represented in worshiping our God. Yeah, and it's just such a such a beautiful time. And hey, if you love food, come on, you know. you get to celebrate all that good food. All right. So we have this great festival and remember the, the nations that will come. And so this whole time, it's like God's calling us out into the wild. He's calling us out into the nature, out of our homes that are air conditioned and climate controlled with all the trappings of... And no mosquitoes. Oh, yeah. Well, that's a problem. So... <laughs> Just dose on your Picardin and stuff like that, you know, and you're off. But but basically, he's calling us out. Like like any good dad's going to take their kid out camping. He's wanting to take you out and for you to take your kids out. And so we just, we love this as a family and there's just so much we get out of it. And this all culminates with what's called Simchat Torah, the great rewind, you could say. <laughs> and well, what is this all about? Well, first of all, Ezra and Nehemiah, during their time, they they say that this whole biblical reading plan, it was actually the first Bible reading plan ever, you could say, um, that they created this, uh, this, the whole system of the Torah portion and the Haftarah portion so that people would be more biblically literate. And as we read the story through the book of Nehemiah, we see that the people were very biblically illiterate. Mm-hmm. And it was a job that Ezra did and Nehemiah did as is bringing the people back in to know his word once again. And so they, the priest would teach them. And, and so this, they say, came from that time, that era. Um, but basically, the Jewish people all around the world, they read through a portion of scripture every single they week. They read the entirety of the five books, the first five books of the, the Bible, the Torah, mm-hmm. in a year. And they have the Parashat HaShavuah. Each week is an assigned reading. And it includes the writings and the uh, prophets as well. Um, and then, after Sukkot, they are at the end of the scroll, and then they reset it, and they wind it back to Genesis 1-1. And it's funny, you know, for us, it's like we flip pages but for them it's a scroll okay and so it takes a long time to roll it's a it's a lot more dramatic of a process with a scroll i mean you just like flop (laughs) and it's a great (laughs) it's a great review though because imagine you go through page by page with your kids and we've done this with our kids Mm -hmm. of going through and like fanning through the pages and then stopping either randomly or intentionally at a particular story and this is what they do in the synagogues as they're rolling back they'll like highlight different passages mm. as they're re-rolling it of this is what we've learned over the year this is what we've read over the year this is the story of our people and our god but simply put this day is a day that they celebrate that and god gave us, to, us the word of we god we can celebrate the torah again uh simchat torah is not a biblical holiday per se uh, again, the only reference that would be somewhat there would be in the time of Ezra and Nehemiah as he taught. Mm-hmm. But nevertheless, it is kind of beautiful as we kind of come through this cycle. And as we look at this fall festival, you know, as, as we've been going through the, in this series, we've been seeing a lot of representation to the final days, to the final chapter of this whole story of redemption as Yeshua returns. And it's also kind of appropriate that in this time you have this rewinding of the scriptures again, kind of a, you're, you're cycling back through the biblical cycle because again, what comes after fall is winter and spring. And then we are going to celebrate again, Pesach. the death, burial and resurrection mm-hmm. and the Holy spirit. We're going to celebrate this in a cycle every year. We're celebrating mm-hmm. every year. We're remembering, but it's, it's John one, John mm-hmm. chapter one in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. Hmm. Like that is the picture. Yes, God gave us the word of God, but it's not just empty words. Right. It's because his son is living and alive and through him, all things were created and Hmm. nothing that was created was not through him. Like (laughs) everything points to Yeshua. The whole earth groans. For that day. Yeah. yeah. From for his return. Well, 
we pray that this would hopefully give you guys some ideas to springboard on. Again, it's not about all of the 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 ritual, uh, legalistic. It's, it's not, not about, about doing that at it the all. right way. It's about remembrance. Uh, use this time to teach your children, to teach yourself, and that the Lord would inspire you. I just pray for all the families out there that, that you would be inspired. Don't, mm-hmm. I just know lots of my friends as we've talked about this during the Passover season, like, oh, I wasn't able to get the matzah right. I wasn't able to get this or oh, I didn't have, hey man, you celebrated. That's awesome. Don't like, don't, a lot of, a lot of sometimes we can get stuck on, I don't have time to do all of this. I'm not going to do any of it. I don't have, I don't really know how to do all this. All I haven't learned all the Hebrew. Who cares if you know Hebrew blessings? That's irrelevant. What's relevant is remembering his salvation. That's the relevant part. So don't get caught in the liturgy. Don't get caught up in the ritual. Get caught up in love with our Savior, Mm -hmm. what he did for us, what he's still doing for us today, Mm -hmm. how he intercedes for us even today. Um, And we just pray, Lord, would you bless our listeners today? Would you just fill them with your spirit during this season to be able to teach their children, to train them up, to be able to hear your voice and to learn more about you and to celebrate your salvation in this season of remembrance in these appointed days. Uh, Lord, would it come alive to many people as they celebrate and that you would bless the times that they have together as families. We just pray your blessing over them in Yeshua's name. Amen.